Ambassador Hugh Montgomery is one of the greatest linguists in the history of the CIA. He speaks eight languages fluently and can communicate in another half dozen. His love of language came from his mother, who was a gifted linguist. She passed her profound interest in foreign languages and cultures to her children. My mother was very musical and also had a, an ear for languages and taught them for a while at Smith College and decided her children ought to have foreign languages too. And I just enjoyed doing it, it was fun. While still a freshman at Harvard University, he enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1942. Ambassador Montgomery jumped into Normandy on D-Day with the 82nd Airborne Division. When you're as young as I was, you didn't even think about it. The jump master, of course, has steel-toed boots, and anyone who hesitated in the slightest got a swift kick you know where, and, and it was very painful if he had to do that. And all you see down there is pitch black, except when the anti-aircraft fire starts, you can see little streaks from the bullets that every so often has a light in it, and you can see the thing going by. He was wounded at the Battle of the Fillets Pocket, the decisive engagement of D-Day, and had an unexpected encounter with the Hitler Youth Division of the Waffen-SS. Ran into 12th SS sponsors with their brand new Tiger tanks. Even a bazooka just bounced off them, and they had the new Super 88 gun on them and we had nothing to match, so we got out of there post-haste. His ability to speak German and French proved to be invaluable. If you can't communicate with people, you can't do very much. When we did pick up prisoners and other people we were trying to find, they didn't speak any English, so somebody had to talk to them. And frequently, I was the only one who spoke German, so that was an essential adjunct. He was recruited by the OSS, and served in the European Theater of Operations with its counterintelligence branch. He went behind enemy lines four times. The work he did was so secret, even he didn't always know what he was doing. Someone asked me one day, would you like to do something exciting and maybe dangerous? And I said, sure, why not? I have no idea how it worked, and most of the OSS people didn't either. I was told, get on a train and go here, and then away we went. I had no idea what OSS was, and they wouldn't tell me what it was. They wouldn't even identify it as such. Just, it'll be very different from what you're doing now. I was in a special section, and we were organized in special counterintelligence detachments and made up mostly of linguists, but of all kinds of experts. We spent a great deal of our time with General Patton's Third Army because they were the most active and on the go, and it was in their zone that we could get through the lines because they moved so fast and so irregularly that you could slip through at night. Working for OSS founder Wild Bill Donovan was exciting, challenging, and rewarding. He liked his boys, as he called them, took good care of them. Everybody loved him. He had a very rich vocabulary, too, as an Irishman. He wanted to be where the action was because of his expertise and because of his relationship with FDR. He called them his sturdy legs. And so he wanted him in Washington, and he relied heavily on him for his intelligence. During Hugh Montgomery's time in the OSS, he searched for atomic scientists took over a secret German intelligence radio station in the Corinthian Alps and liberated the concentration camp at Buchenwald. We saw the barbed wire from quite a ways away, and we knew what, what we'd stumble across once you smelled it and saw all of the bodies stacked up around and just dead bodies everywhere. And all these people were standing at the gate, those who were able to do so. And they then pulled down the flag and gave it to me. To, big SS flag that was flying over the camp. Some of the guards had uh, taken off into the woods nearby, and when they saw Americans, they wanted to surrender to us, and we could not take them with us. The prisoners themselves, the ones that were still able to stand and walk around, they said, please give the guards to us and we'll take care of them. And I'm sure they did. Ambassador Montgomery was one of the first Americans in Berlin after the war. Berlin was a, a wreck. 
certainly the center of the city, been bombed back to the Stone Ages, literally. Some streets were just impassable. It made life very difficult to get from one place to another. You had to wait until they literally plowed one lane through the streets. On one mission to the remote mountains of Western Austria, he met his future wife, Anne Marie. Although they were unable to communicate for almost three years after World War II, she was able to come to the United States after Congress passed the War Brides Act in 1948. They were married for 66 years. After the war, he returned to Harvard on the GI Bill, where he received three degrees, including a PhD in Romance Languages and Literature. He taught at Harvard until he was persuaded by Richard Helms to join the CIA in 1952, serving in a variety of Eastern and Western European posts. Started off again in Berlin, and we were in Berlin eight or nine years. Athens, Paris, Moscow, Vienna, 10 years in Rome. Like George Washington, he had the gift of being in the right place at the right time for some historic events, like the Penkovsky case, the Achille Lauro terrorist attack, and the Berlin Tunnel. Dug a tunnel in Berlin in 1955 and went into East Germany and tapped all the Soviet communication lines from Germany to Moscow. That was a very successful operation. The tunnel was discovered after 16 months and we were listening to them. We had microphones in the tap chamber and we're listening to the Germans talk about, wow, I wonder who did this and so forth until they finally found the microphone and disabled it. Ambassador Montgomery not only left a lasting legacy on the CIA, but also on the State Department's Bureau of Intelligence and Research that traces its creation to the OSS Research and Analysis Branch. You, Montgomery, had an extraordinary career in the CIA and did much to advance the role of intelligence as an intelligence officer. Then, uh, in uh, 1981, President Reagan uh, appointed him to head the State Department's intelligence service Intelligence and Research, which we knew as fondly as INR. I'd call him one of the founding fathers of the CIA. He really has devoted his entire life to, uh, uh, to the CIA, and uh, he was just a fountain of information about the CIA and everything it did. Ambassador Hugh Montgomery held some of the most senior positions in the intelligence community. He retired from the CIA in March 2014 after 63 years of exemplary service. The jobs you've taken on were tough. They were understated. You performed them with honor and dignity, but thoroughness. Uh, you gave integrity to the in intelligence profession in our country, and for that we're very grateful. I know that you miss Anne Marie who was your partner for so many years and so effective. Somehow I think she's shining down on you tonight, as we all are, as we honor you. Congratulations. Good evening. I wanted to join in paying tribute to my dear friend, my colleague, and most importantly, my paisano, Ambassador Hugh Montgomery. I can't think of anyone, anyone, who more deserves the Donovan Award than Hugh. He's dedicated his entire life, going back to World War II, to the intelligence services and to protecting this country. His experiences, his dedication, the deployments that he has done, uh, he has an incredible career of giving back to the country. When I was director of the CIA, Hugh put together volumes on our liaison relationships and the importance of our working with our liaison partners in providing the very best intelligence for this country. My father, when there was someone special, would say that that person is a bonomo, which means a good man in Italian. Believe me, 
Hugh Montgomery. He's an homo bonissimo, the very best. I only wish, uh, Hugh, that I could be there, particularly with my dog, Bravo, who's about your age now. And I have a feeling that both of you are going to continue to live for a very long time. And that is to our benefit. So, molti grazie per tutto and buona fortuna. For the rest of you, that means many thanks and good luck on a great future. Thank you, Hugh. The 2015 William J. Donovan Award recipient, Ambassador Hugh Montgomery, was and is an ideal OSS candidate, a Harvard PhD who can handle himself in a bar fight.